Well, welcome. This is a uh, present with the Brusser Department of Communication and Theater Arts. We're glad you joined us today. I'm Peggy Finucan. I'm a faculty member, and I teach in the areas of um, research and theory and a little bit of integrated marketing communication. And I'm Sarah Stashauer, and I do teach in the integrated marketing communication area with 20 years, 30 years in the advertising business. I'm Bob Noll. Uh, I, I've uh, been in the business a long time, both in television and, and a little bit of film and a ton of theater. And I've been here, and also marketing, and I've been here, uh, I, originally just could be one year, this was going to be a one year transition, and I'm celebrating my 23rd year here, so <laughs> it, this is a good place to be. Hi guys, I'm Peter Hopkins, I'm a current junior here, I'm studying integrated marketing track within the communications school, and I'm from uh, Gross Point, Michigan, a little suburb outside of Detroit. I'm Madeline Smanick. Uh, I'm a senior, and I'm from Westlake, Ohio. I'm Alexa Kempton. I'm a junior, and I'm from Buffalo, New York. I'm Janessa Berkman. I'm a sophomore from Strongsville, Ohio. Okay, what we'd like to do is have a little bit of a conversation, so if you have questions at any time, just let us know, and we'll be happy to gauge you in the conversation as well. We want to share with you some perspectives on our department, and we want to start with some alumni perspectives. So, just give me a minute. We're going to move. Yeah, we're going to move. <laughs> we're going to see. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're in technical difficulties. I think we're okay. Let's start with Jen. Um, so, we asked our alums to My name is Jennifer Holton. I am from the class they, of 2012, and I'm currently the reporter and anchor at WECP TV, the CBS news affiliate in Panama City Beach, Florida. My communications degree from John Carroll University has enabled me to go many, many places that I'm very fortunate to have gone. Um, after graduation, I ended up moving to Washington, D.C. and working for Fox News as the assistant to Greta Van Susteren on her show on the record. One of the things that I think is great about the communications department at John Carroll is that you can get involved in a lot of different things in the realm of communications. You can get involved in newspaper, which allows you to hone your writing skills and really become very creative. One of the reasons that I chose John Carroll University and their specific communications department was because I knew that I would be a big fish in a small pond. Uh, John Carroll isn't that big of a school, and some people do like that, some people don't, but I loved it because I knew that I could get so much experience in my four years there. If you do decide to major in communications, I think one of the best things you can do as a student um, your freshman year is just to get involved. Start getting your feet wet, do uh, newspaper, become involved in radio. They have a great radio station. Um, get involved in TV4 as I did. I created a show. I mean, really, the ball is in your court. You have every opportunity just right at your fingertips. And the professors couldn't be more encouraging, and they really want you to succeed. So I would say just delve right into it and become as involved as you can, and it does work out for the best. And Rick Harris is, uh, well, he'll tell you who he is. I am Rick Harris, President and General Manager of NBC10 and Telemundo 62, and also a proud graduate of John Carroll University, classes of 1986, undergraduate, and 2005 graduate. Having a communications degree from John Carroll has meant the world to me. It's provided access to a number of people in our, uh, in our business and also in our community. It's also provided a wealth of knowledge and information that has helped me uh, excel and, and succeed in the world of media. My degree from John Carroll University has enabled me to fulfill a dream, a dream of working in media. I actually started in radio back in the 1980s at WUJC. From there, I went on to work at a local uh, newspaper, the Cleveland Plain Dealer, and at a, a number of television stations uh, in Cleveland and uh, around the country, frankly. Uh, but it all started with my degree and the knowledge that I gained at John Carroll. 
My communications degree from John Carroll University prepared me to lead and manage the organization that I lead and manage today, NBC 10 and Telemundo 62. But the truth is, very early on, it prepared me to do some very simple things, mm -hmm. to be able to put my thoughts into writing, to be able to put my thoughts into words, and to become a critical thinker. All of those things helped me become the, the leader that I am today, and I'm very grateful for that and my degree from John Carroll. My favorite classes at John Carroll would have to have been television production and radio production. Those were a lot of fun, and they, they actually prepared me for what I do today. Um, you know, my most fun, or the most fun that I had outside of the class was actually working for the radio station, WUJC, where I had my first radio uh, job, which then eventually led to uh, a disc jockey job with the local commercial radio station. So yes, John Carroll gave me my start in TV and radio. My degree from John Carroll University prepared me for a number of different jobs in media. Sales, marketing, news, finance, creative services, all of the things that you would do in a, a job like mine as being president and general manager for the television station. But more than anything, John Carroll prepared me for a lifetime and career of critical thinking, writing, reading, and connecting with people. Outside of the classroom, my favorite activity was being a disc jockey at 88.7 WUJC. And I know you guys call it WJCU now, but it was WUJC, and it was a great place to learn about radio. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Taught me a lot about our business, uh, both in front of the microphone and behind the scenes. The thing that I think I really enjoyed most was playing varsity basketball for the John Carroll Blue Street, where I learned about leadership and I learned about sacrifice, and I learned about intuitiveness, all the things that help you become a success in your life and your career. <coughs> so what we asked each of them to do was just reflect on what it has meant for them to have this uh, John Carroll degree, and we think that it's been an important uh, part of Understanding what value it has um, for our majors. Lest you think that they're all uh, video, TV majors, or production people. Um, we did ask a variety of students to come and share their current views with you today. We do have other videos, but I think it's more important for you to hear from the people who are currently in the program as well. So we've asked these young people to talk to you about why they came to John Carroll. And so, uh, Janessa, do you want to start? Yeah. What brought you to John Carroll? So I came to John Carroll because from the moment I stepped on the, can you see me? Is it easier if I stand up? Okay. Um, <laughs> so I came to John Carroll because the moment I stepped on the campus, um, it felt like a home. I know they kind of talked to you guys about that um, in the session you were just at, but from the day one that I stepped on here, I knew that it was a genuine thing that I was getting. It wasn't some face that um, they were putting on to try to sell me on the school. And I think I really saw that through just the individual interactions I kind of had with the students um, throughout Celebration Day, actually. Um, and additionally for that, just all the opportunities that John Carroll has, I knew that it was going to be a great investment in my future. And so um, as a sophomore, I'm just starting to kind of get into everything, but knowing how I'm going to probably most likely have a job out here um, by the time I'm a senior is a really great opportunity. Okay, so uh, I basically chose John Carroll for really similar reasons. Um, I really <coughs> noticed the small community that was within it. Uh, everyone was just so friendly and willing to help. Uh, when I came to um, st uh, student day just like this, uh, all the teachers were just like very, um, very willing to help me out uh, with my college decision and uh, be there to help me through um, any questions that I had. And everyone was just so, uh, just there for you. And I really enjoyed that. Um, it's very personable. So uh, that's why I chose John Carroll. Okay, so uh, John Carroll was actually the first college that I went on a tour of. And I was a little bit reluctant at first because I'm from Westlake, which is 40 minutes away, you know, it's a Cleveland suburb. I thought, I don't want to go to a small school, like, near home. And then um, once I got here, um, it completely changed my mind. And every school I visited after this, I kept comparing it to John Carroll and saying, like, well, I like this, I liked this better at John Carroll. They have a better community at John Carroll. So I realized this was where I was supposed to be. 
And something that uh, stood out to me when I first um, went on a tour here was that everyone seemed like they still loved their school, even if they were a freshman who just got here or a senior who was about to leave. Um, I could tell everyone was happy with the choice that they made to come here, and that motivated me to choose the school as well. Um, so I'm, I had a sort of interesting situation. I was going to play college soccer here, and then basically like a weekend, I decided it was not really for me. Um, and that's one of the reasons why uh, I wanted to come to Carroll. So I was still honestly reluctant that first semester here, like I know a lot of college students are. But after joining a couple organizations on campus and really getting a foothold um, about the campus, about the community here, just to piggyback off their points, like it is really a great community. Um, everyone's always here for you. Um, I feel like I know so many people. Obviously, it's a small school, but um, yeah, just to sort of piggyback off their points, you know, community's huge, and um, you know, after that first semester, I knew this was definitely the place for me. That's great. Thank you. What did you then talk to us a little bit about? Why did you choose the communication <coughs> major? What drew you to the department? Okay, so I actually just officially decided to join communication um, about like a week ago. I just officially <laughs> decided my major. Um, well, she's a really good student. <laughs> <laughs> because coming in, I was so undecided. I thought I wanted to go into education, I thought I wanted to do psychology, and then I thought I wanted to maybe do communication. And so um, my first year, I kind of just started taking core classes and just kind of really trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And um, that's when I kind of started taking some communication classes and just really seeing the great part about it and how it connects to so many aspects of my life is just something that really drew me to the communication department. Um, I'm doing the integrated marketing communication track and I'm in that um, introduction class right now and just seeing how um, that class is really going to help me prepare me for my future jobs. Um, right now I know in that class we're um, making up an integrated marketing communication plan and I actually just got an internship that they asked me to do that exact same thing. So what I'm doing in my classroom is really applying to my real life experience and so I think that's something that the rest of the department does a really great job at is connecting the classroom experience to real life. So uh, I'm also an integrated marketing uh, track and I was really drawn to that program to begin with. Uh, I read up on it um, and I looked at a lot of different schools that offered it which there wasn't too many that did but um, I read up on it and John Carroll's just really seemed most appealing to me. Uh, the different classes and the special topics class uh, classes uh, really um, brought me to it, to, the, to my decision. So uh, yeah, and I talked to a lot of upperclassmen who were just starting um, the IMC track as well and they just loved it. Like they're, they're passionate about it and that instantly motivated me to uh, decide with the communications department. So actually when I was a freshman, um, I came in as an undeclared major. Um, I was very uncertain about what I wanted to study um, so I just started taking a bunch of different core classes. And then at the, during the second semester of my freshman year, I joined the Carroll News, which is the student newspaper. And I realized it, it, that's when it sort of clicked for me. And I thought, like, okay, well, I love reading and I love writing. So communication is actually the major where um, you get to do that the most, I think, and where um, that's actually really what you get to study and, um, and pursue. So that's why I ended up... Um, choosing it because once I joined the newspaper then I went full force taking all these communication courses and realized okay yeah this was the right decision for me. Um, so coming into Carroll I uh, thought I was going to be studying like straight up business um, and uh, you know I, first semester uh, really the first year um, I still thought that but then the beginning of my sophomore year uh, actually right before my sophomore year I was granted a really amazing opportunity out in California for an internship uh, in Los Angeles and it was within uh, the entertainment industry, um, film and television. So basically after that summer between freshman and sophomore year, I knew that uh, the communication school would obviously um, kind of go hand in hand with what I wanted to do in terms of a career. Um, and since then I've actually studied abroad as well and it just kind of goes to show that communications is such a, you know, it's such a huge field. You can do PR, you can do integrated marketing, you can go into advertising, um, you can do uh, news, radio, television, I mean there's so many things you can do with it. And kind of going over, I was in London, going over in London we went to this like international branding expo and it just kind of goes to show how much, um, you know, with advertising and branding, you know, it's going on over in Europe as well as uh, the U.S. here. So I think that sort of solidified for me um, why the communication school is so, um, is so great. Great, thank you.
what we'd like to do next then is, is tell you a little bit about the major itself and what we would offer you as a student in our department. But Peter did it for me. I couldn't do it better myself. Dr. Finucane, who you'll come to call Dr. F, um, told you that the videos that you saw um, were around mass communication, around uh, journalism and broadcasting. And it's true that we're the Russert Department of Communication, but we like to say that we are all Russerts. And I hope you'll take one of these before you leave. And the reason we say that is that Tim Russert, uh, alum and, of course, the uh, Meet the Press icon of, of beloved memory, really embodied what it means to create and deliver messages. And that's what we do regardless of the track or concentration that you choose. If you're in general communication studies or you've heard a little bit about IMC, look forward to having you next year, um, journalism or persuasive relational visual media, you are still about, regardless, creating and sending messages to your audience. And in order to do that, you have to understand who your audience is, what they want, what they need, and how you're going to be as persuasive as possible. We've got a lot of stuff that clutters up our brains. We are exposed to five to 10,000 messages, media messages a day. How are you going to create the one that's going to stick? And that's what our department is all about. How are we going to connect to the audience? So if you're in persuasion, persuasion, <laughs> persuasive relational, I always do that. I'm very dyslexic. Um, and you want to talk to somebody effectively in a corporate setting, in a human relations setting, in your personal relationships and interpersonal, you've got to understand someone else's frame of reference and be able to deliver a message that you meant one way and they may receive a completely different way. If you're working in a small group, you have to understand how to collaborate. If you're in IMC, which you've heard a little bit about, we create campaigns as you get deeper into the program for area organizations such as Playhouse Square, Facing History and Ourselves. And we help them solve what I call naughty problems in strategic communications. We create actual IMC campaigns that are going to be used by these organizations. And Bob can talk to you a little bit more about journalism and, and, and all the media but there again, you've got an audience, you've got a very limited time, you've got social media, you've got to be able to package and send that message in the best way possible. So that's my quick overview. Do I have another slide or do I sit down? Okay. <laughs> we also have minors. You can take a major and minor in communication studies or theater, and we also have focus, or foci, I believe is the... Um, Plural, am I right about that, Dr. Finucan? So. Um, in film studies or media writing. Writing is obviously a critical component to this, you heard them say. And we um, are very serious about it, and that's one way. And film, you might want to talk a little bit about, but those are ways that you're going to package and deliver those messages that we talked about. We are all resorts. Okay, I'm going to talk a little about the co-curriculars. Co-curriculars means, okay, you go to the classroom, you go to the hours, you do your homework, but now, to me, the real, the learning really begins because you take what you learn in the classroom and now you become active in organizations. Like, for instance, the Carol News, you know, in the last 20 years we've won over 100 awards, including the best non-daily newspaper in the United States two years ago. So. It's a, it's a really well regarded newspaper. And one of the things that we have really going for us, and that goes with all the co curriculars I'm going to talk about, is that unlike a lot of colleges, if you come in the first day, as, as Madeline can tell you, and you want to be part of the Carroll News, you, you just come in, and next thing you know, you'll be writing for the Carroll News. I mean, we don't waste any time. You want to be, a, we have an award winning debate team, you want to be part of the debate team, no problem. J just go see uh, the person in charge of it, or advisor, and next thing you know, you're learning debate. And you start. That goes with the Public Relations Society. I, I, I can tell you about that. And Society of Professional Journalism. And plus, our, our theaters. Our, we have plays here. Audition, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, experience, no experience, whatever. You can just come on in, audition, and away you go. And that's an important part about the college education, in, in, in my opinion, is that 
There's the academics, which is the grades and all that, but also it's the idea that you really need to, de to develop what's called a portfolio in the communication world, where you need to show, show employers that you know how to do things. And the best way to do that is take the classes, learn all the different areas of communication, but then show that you've, you've applied yourself with the newspaper, with Clippings the newspaper, your own radio show, your own TV show, your own you know, internships that will be talked about in a second, to get experience so that you can show people that, yes, I know what I'm doing. I'm getting a good degree about John Carroll, which a good liberal arts degree, which teaches you how to think, and which teaches you how to have ethics, and which teaches you values and a lot of skills. But the fact that you can apply this, your, what you've learned by being part of these co-curriculars is really a valuable asset. So we'll take it from there. Thank okay. And so the other aspect of the department that we really um, value and are, are proud of what we do with this is the internships and experiential learning. Um, Janessa was talking about how the internships really integrate the classroom learning with the work experience and how the, the one informs the other. And that's a really uh, important aspect of what we believe in preparing students for finding careers post-graduation, that you need to have those opportunities. As Bob said, the, the co-curriculars <clears throat> prepare you to get the internships, you get the on-campus experience, you build a portfolio that prepares you for the internship, the internship then helps you to be ready for the world of work when you graduate. And so we encourage students to have multiple internships, and we have built a system in, within the department that uh, helps students find internships and pre prepare them for those. Uh, we're continuing to build that, uh, the preparation. Um, we can help with resume review. The Career Center does an excellent job with uh, that as well. They'll do mock interviews with students, resume reviews, PRSSA, and, and um, Alexa is the president of the student organization this year. And so they offer Ready, Set, Resume and a couple other kinds of events. They bring in uh, alums who are professionals in the f different areas of that our majors would traditionally work in. And they go over resume review, they give advice, and those kinds of things so that you have opportunity and access for networking and that um, to re get you ready for the internships, for the jobs. And you have those uh, then ask, you know, those opportunities available to you. Uh, we have students. We have 17 interns this semester. Yes. Are the internships only available for people, major, students majoring in the program, or could minor students get internships as well? Sure, they can. Yes. Uh, yeah, the minors are available. Uh, I'm sorry, the internships are available to minors as well. Yes. And uh, the, the, I'm assuming you mean for credit. Or, Not necessarily, yeah. just for experience as well. Yeah, yeah. We do offer them for credit, or they could, student can take it for no credit. Um, that's up to them, but, you know, their decision. You can earn three credits toward the major or the minor. Um, you know, three of the academic credits that are required. The major is 39 credits. Three of those could be for an internship. You can earn an additional three credits toward the graduation requirement in the internship. So over the course of a semester, working X number of hours in the internship, you would earn three credits. You do reflective work with that, writing papers, doing a project for the internship that then you then bring back to campus and do a presentation, and then assuming a satisfactory evaluation from your supervisor, you would receive your credit. So, uh, We also offer service learning where the students, we have several courses where students are engaged in service in the community that is uh, able to be integrated. The coursework informs the service and the service informs the coursework. So in intercultural communication, students are working, for example, with refugee populations, learning about culture and engaging with people from who are refugee population that they can apply the course concepts in their reflective journals and use the course material as they engage with the refugees in service to them. In my media, in my media literacy class, the students last year were working with children in a creative writing program and working with them about media literacy concepts, uh, taking the media literacy to the children and then applying what they were learning from those experiences back in the, the journals that they were keeping for the media literacy class. 
And so you can see the integration of learning with one informing the other. Um, as Sarah mentioned in her presentation, the campaigns class works with Playhouse Square, with Facing History and Ourselves. In my event planning class, the students have clients both on campus and off that they actually, over the course of a semester, plan events for these clients. And so we really try to find multiple ways of engaging students in these experiential learning opportunities that help uh, with you know, understanding growth and development of the, you know, the course material in that. What questions do you have? Yes. Yeah. You know, with the technology and social media now and the mm -hmm. whole transformation of communication, mm -hmm. where is John Carroll in your coursework in teaching that, let alone just writing for a newspaper or doing a little video? Because these kids are going to be seeing a whole decade of who they communicate that my generation would be a newscaster whereas they might just be somewhere behind tweeting or something right. for advertising in so, particular. Yeah. Right, so um, I'll start that off with, um, I have a kind of a joke with students when I taught, I developed and taught social media class, and I said that to them at the beginning, you know, what I teach you today is going to be obsolete by the time you graduate. So there are kind of two answers to that. We um, do understand it's a digital world, we are preparing our mass media, the journalism broadcast for that digital world. And also in IMC, it's, it's become true that, um, and, and you've seen this in news too, that it's the social media that's driving the content, not the other way around. And, you know, we don't send out press releases. I feel like a dinosaur, um, you know, because it's actually the way you blog and the way you get somebody's attention. So we're hip to that. But we also believe that, um, yeah, I know that was an old word too. <laughs> but we also believe that above all, you have to understand strategically what you're trying to do. So some of these platforms will come and go, and that's what I mean when I tell them that what um, I'm teaching them today will be obsolete when they graduate. But you still have to understand how to be open to that how to learn to be flexible and diverse, how to think strategically about the message that you're trying to send out regardless of the channels that you use to get that message out. So we're kind of playing both sides of that, of that uh, problem, and it's a very complicated one. Can I just ask something about um, like in IT communications, you know, someone that needs a background in sort of computer science versus... Well, there is computer science offered on campus and we also collaborate and you may want to talk about this we collaborate we have a digital center in the lot I'm pointing over there but I'm in the library <laughs> and and uh, so we all collaborate on that um, learning web design and and um, you know you can be the back-end person or you can be the one who has the responsibility for the messaging of it but you have to be aware of both sides of that equation and we offer all of that and make that available. So you could do, you could create your own major minor? Uh, we yeah. had students actually that, do There that. is an option for that here. Yes. Self-designed major. Mm -hmm. And actually the Center for Digital Media Director teaches in our department mm -hmm. a course in, we call it multimedia, but that's not necessarily a descriptive title of what he teaches. Uh, and we've had this issue in, the uh, media literacy class, Peter and Omar are both in the class this semester, and we talk about the changes in how we understand what it means to be media literate, and it used to be as a consumer, and now we have to think about it in terms of being a consumer and a producer, and, and how, does you, how do you navigate that, and um, what does that change for you, and, and thinking, there's, it's a very different world than it was even you know, five, eight years ago, and so uh, we have to really even not with all the equipment pieces, but just conceptually we have to rethink how we look at it. And Alexa, you may want to say, you know, we've studied this in Christ. She's mentioned a special topics course, and she's taking Crisis Com. I happen to know that because I'm teaching it. And one of the things that we talk about is how social media drives the response to a crisis. And we've, we've been covering them all semester. Yeah. You were going to say I was just going to say something. You know, this idea of storytelling is not going to go away. The meaning is going to change, but the basics are still there. And the other thing about communication is we study audiences. 
And so that's why, that's why I think we can keep up to date with what's going on by that very process of continued learning. It keeps evolving the various ways to get to that audience, but you still you have to understand the audience. Yeah. And we still have to tell a story that will attract an audience to pay attention to our, exactly to our message. It. Exactly. It. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> do, you guys, do each of you want to take a few minutes and tell us a little bit about highlights of your time in the department? What, what do you find most interesting, best, challenging? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really big on internships. We've talked a lot about that. Um, I feel like that is, uh, for me, probably the most important thing in terms of uh, kind of uh, pursuing and keeping uh, going with my uh, professional development going forward. Um, and a big thing for me is networking uh, along with the internship. So uh, like Dr. Newton said, uh, the Career Center is, is you know, right there. It's across the street, uh, right basically on campus here. Uh, combined with um, a bunch of faculty members who day in and day out are want to help. I mean, they want to help you graduate. Also, they also want to uh, help you get a job and be successful in your professional career. So, uh, for example, I had a class uh, my sophomore year, and my um, I'm really in interested in film and television. So, really, the entertainment side of uh, communication. And I had an American Electronic Media class. And at the end of the course, um, I uh, found out that my teacher uh, formerly worked at uh, NBC Universal and I just went up to her and talked to her had a, started a conversation about um, you know pursuing things outside of school and she gave me a contact who I'm still now in touch today a year later and who basically helped me obtain an internship uh, in California this summer so um, I'm really big on internships like I said before and also you know not just from faculty members from uh, current and former students as well so when I was a sophomore as well um, I talked to a couple of my buddies who were seniors at the time who were graduating but um, needed to fill positions for an internship here in Cleveland called the Owens Group, which um, a lot of people from Carroll here interned for, which is basically uh, an entertainment marketing firm uh, in Beechwood here who basically help clients such as Warner Brothers, Sony Pictures, other film studios promote their films in the Cleveland market by going out to bars, restaurants, malls, and uh, handing out uh, posters, t-shirts, and really being like field market representatives for the films in their studios themselves. So. I'd say, um, for me, uh, internships have been huge for uh, being in this department. And um, for me personally, when getting internships, it's my experiences um, in co-curriculars that um, ha has been the mo what's made me the most marketable, I think. I was fortunate enough to intern at Cleveland Magazine uh, last summer, which I recommend to all communication majors. It's a wonderful experience, and I, I know for sure I got that internship because I had writing samples from working at the Carroll News. Like I could show that I had been published, you know, it's a student newspaper, but it's still, um, you have to use all the facets of journalism to, um, to, work, to work there. And you have to um, know what you're doing to an extent before you can get that, um, that internship. So the student newspaper, I always recommend to people because you get incredible writing experience. And by the time you graduate, you have this portfolio of um, published writing that you can say you worked on and it has you know it has your byline on it and everything and um, also I mean our department offers great opportunities for postgrad um, so I'm sure many of you I hope have heard about the um, the Russert Fellowship which is a great opportunity for a graduate going to meet the press and I'm happy to say that just yesterday I found out that I'm the meet the press fellow for next year so uh, thank you for me, that's like obviously what I've been. That's what I've been striving for since I was a sophomore and declared my communication major. And I'm also uh, majoring in political science. I'm a double major. And, and just think about the Russert Scott Fellowship is that every student that has won that from John Carroll, NBC has offered them a position afterwards. So it just shows you it, it really leads right to the top right away. Then we have people all over NBC working for us, and a lot of it came out of that that fellowship. Yeah, I'm very excited because it, it is an incredible opportunity, to say the least. Um, but also, since, like I said, since I'm a double major, um, communication pairs really well with a lot of other areas of study, um, not just to be a double major, um, but to minor in other things as well. I have, I know people who are psychology majors with a communication minor, or who are, um, you know, political science majors who are doubling with communication, or English. Um, it combines very well with a lot of things because you have to use communication skills in whatever field you go into. You're always going to have to communicate with other people, um, so it gives you a really solid background. 
And a uh, cool thing that I like about uh, the Roswell Department is uh, Tuesday, or well, it's once a week, uh, they have like a tea party basically. <laughs> and uh, it's in the department, and um, there's usually a few teachers there. And sometimes there's special guests, and there's always food, and it's basically you can just go uh, just to talk, talk about what you're doing, uh, you know, news, anything. It's, it's a really cool thing to do, and I feel like that's something you really can only get at a small school. Uh, it's very rare to see something so uh, personal at a larger school. But, yeah, there's just a really uh, direct connection and relationship uh, with the students and the teachers. So that's something that I love about this school and the department. Um, and I also really like how this, uh, the department is good about reaching out um, beyond the school, like for networking and internships. Uh, I know like the PRSSA, uh, the public relations chapter at the school, um, reaches out to the Cleveland uh, National Chapter of PRSA, so it's not the student side of things. So uh, there's great networking, like student days, so I keep in contact with so many people that I've met. Um, uh, alumni from John Carroll and uh, outside so it's just a great uh, networking a place to network as well um, and kind of off what she said um, how much communication actually applies to so many other aspects is something that I've tr really been uh, figuring out as I've started really into the communications track um, I'm actually also a theology and Catholic studies minor and so I'm taking a class right now called Catholicism in the digital age and it's talking about things that are connected to my communication class but in the theology world which is really um, cool and interesting um, but another thing I also like about, I guess, the Russell Department and IMC in general is that it's so fast-paced and you're constantly moving, constantly learning, and that's something that I know I really enjoy. I like to keep busy and con be constantly doing something. And so just knowing that, like the social media that I use, like as teenagers, you know, like we're on Twitter or on Facebook and just using that and be able to apply it to the job, it's so, it's fun, it's creative, and I, I can honestly say that I enjoy what I'm doing and I know that... Um, once I get a job that I'm going to enjoy what I'm doing every day and it's not going to be something that I just have to go to because it's a job, so. Thank you. What other questions do you have? Anybody here? We can answer for you. Yeah. What would you all individually like to do? What would your job in the communications field be? Like, I know you've got your internship coming up, but what would you like to do as an end result? Any ideas? I'm, I'm not 100% sure yet, but um, I've been thinking about, I also am really interested in education, so I think I would possibly hope to maybe do something with communication for a school, so either working in the marketing department or something to, um, or admissions department to kind of like promote a school, that's something that I'm thinking about, but I'm also open to a lot of things, I still have a lot of time to figure it out, so. Uh, for me, I'm I'm very open to a lot of different things. I mean, the communications field is so broad, so it's <coughs> it's really nice. Um, like one time, like one day I'll be thinking of this, like sales, and the other day I'll be thinking of marketing. But um, yeah, I would like to do something creative. Uh, yeah, definitely some, keeping creative. So um, yeah, and my classes really help me with that. Uh, and I know that uh, Bob Knowles teaches a class of marketing and sales, and I just like found out that I am interested in that as well. So every day it's kind of different for me, but um, yeah, I, I just love the department in general. I, I mean, it's probably pretty obvious, but uh, political journalism is what I'd love to work in. Um, I just, obviously, I picked my majors based on um, what I love to study, um, thinking, you know, I'm going to get a good education and be able to find a job somewhere, so I should just pick what um, I enjoy doing, not what I think is going to make me the most money. So I picked communication and political science because I love reading and writing and I love politics and they combine very well and I really hope to um, have a career in political journalism. Um, I would say working at a film studio um, and uh, my dream job would be like a, being a studio executive for sure. So at this point, and yeah, so we'll see. Dream big. Dream big, yeah. Dream big, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're still trying to figure out what we want to do when we grow up. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Um, actually, uh, you mentioned something about theology, having like a mind link. Has, has there been any connection with John Carroll and EWTN by any chance? Um, I, I don't know specifically. In terms of what? Um, Just, uh, like internships or? Communication part. Has anyone had any kind of connection between their TV show and, and the 
I know. Um, I know we had um, a JCU alumni who worked yeah. for it's not EWTN but Vatican Radio. Um, she came in and talked to us about mm -hmm. all the things that she's doing. So that was kind of cool to hear um, what she's doing in that field. And she kind of talked about how about their social media and about like the radio and just like all those different aspects. So I know in that way we do have some John Carroll people involved. And there's a yeah. grad student who was doing um, work for the PWTN. Father. I'm sorry, I can't think of his name. <laughs> oh, Harvey? Yes, yes. Um, uh, yeah, he had he had a show on EWTN. Um, I I don't know his name. I'm sorry, off the top of my head, I can't think of it. But he was doing. Uh, I've been compiling lists of alumni from the department and where they are and what they're doing. And I know he's doing work for EWTN. He has a show on the on there. But um, he's a master's student, or you know, graduate from the department. Yeah. Anybody else? So yeah. for the internships and the co-curriculars, and particularly the internships, you said they have three credits. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, that, and that people do, uh, clearly it seems like all four of the students are present have, to have taken advantage of that. So I'm assuming you've all done some non-credit internships as well? Um, well, I'm doing an internship right now that's very, um, it's like less than part-time, I'd say, with the hours that um, I, I like maxed out my credits with um, John Carroll's internship offerings. It's with a nonprofit that's actually right down the street. Um, it's called Belfair, and um, so they help like uh, homeless uh, youth in the area, and so I'm um, interning as their social, social media intern, so I predominantly help them with um, social media posts, so it's uh, communications related. Um, just not something that I'm receiving credit for. So a twofold piece here. So are the non-credits occurring often in the summer? And then what Manny type? It could be commanding time. Year round. It, it, Both it, it, are year round. Year, the credit year, and non-credit. And in terms of students getting to these locations, is that completely on their own? Yes. Okay. We have worked with students to place them or recommend them to sites that um, take into account transportation. Um, we even have a student who borrows her car or my car once a <laughs> week to get to her internship. Um, but we're not offering that to you know, but, but we will take that into account. And actually, Belfair is a great example because it's walkable and there are others walkable that um, we have a fair number of students from psychology, from our department, from the uh, from others uh, areas who work there and just hoof it for sure. Okay. So and we've cultivated ones within walking distance or on campus or by bus that are appropriate. Mm -hmm. You know, that meet the criteria that help students who don't have access to a vehicle. Okay, so it doesn't put you at a disadvantage. No, no, no. Not, no. Mm -mm. not either having no. a car or the means. Right. No. Right. Well, to a last summer, the RTA was my best friend. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's how I got to my internship. And so also it's very doable. Um, on campus, especially, I know I've met a couple of upperclassmen through my classes in the communication department. And so like, building relationships with the upperclassmen who do have cars like that you could borrow or like build friendships with. So I know like that's um, my one friend takes an upperclassman's car to her internship. Or carpool. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Hi. Uh, the integrated. Um, program, or in, in any of the programs in communication. So to my understanding, you're saying three credit, are, uh, three credit per semester or for their major? Toward the major. Okay, so yeah. then the non-credit is just for their portfolio yes. experiences? Mm -hmm. But remember, you can get six credits. It's just that up to six credits. It, it, it's that three can go towards your major, right. and three can go towards your general. To the so 120, to the 120 hours eight, eight, however many it is. Sorry, yeah. 128. Don't ask me a number <laughs> question. But yeah, so you're towards your general. And then students will also, I've got a number of students who are doing projects now for portfolio builders, right. maybe a little stipend if the organization is able or feels so inclined. So um, when we say a three credit, and actually you're the better person to speak to this, it's set up as a course. So you've got to have 15 hours minimum a week to put aside for that internship. 
and sometimes your schedule won't accommodate that. So that's why we have all these different, um, you know, sizes and ways in. Right. So I mean, ideally, the I mean, the motivation for the non-credit is to really build your portfolio, yes. and maybe it's a connection to a job. Absolutely. Yes. Because one of the things about the communication field is that entry-level position has pretty much gone away. Like most companies, you have to have internships. Ideally, right. so you have to be one-on-one -on -one with people. We talked about social media, but it's still the one-on-one -on -one thing, right. and that isn't, it's not going to change. Yeah, I just here. wanted to, yeah. to yeah. clarify the credit, non-credit, yeah. what's the or goal in, for the, the, yeah. the and, and in my area, in IMC, ideally, I'd love students to have an experience in an agency environment, in a corporate setting, and in a nonprofit. That's three internships. Yeah. That would be ideal because, you know, it's a little like saying you want to be an elementary school teacher, but you go to there the first day and they throw temper paint on you and you're like, oh, forget this. I want you to see where you fit. And everybody has a different connection. And so, so that's three, but you don't have to get credit for all three. You can have exposure to all three. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Well, the good news is we're eating lunch with you. Yes. And don't forget to take a, a, a Carol News to place before you leave. Too. We have a one-page information sticker. sheet about the department, and bumper sticker, we yeah. are all rest bumper stickers. Or they go on your computer. That's the new thing. Put it on your computer on your laptop. Not across the Well, thank you all for your time today.